So you're in the market for a new computer for music production, but you've seen a lot of videos probably around YouTube telling you how great the iPad is for music production and mine was probably one of them. But if you're someone that doesn't have the option of spending your money on multiple devices, can the iPad Pro or any iPad for that matter be a full on laptop replacement for you? That is what we're gonna answer in today's video. Welcome back creatives, it's Jarrell, and I wanna start this video out by just giving a couple disclaimers. One, this video is intended for people that are looking to purchase a new computer, but you don't have the luxury of purchasing more than one device, so you wanna make sure you're putting your money where it should go. And you wanna know if the iPad can do it all. So right off the bat, my answer is yes, but with some caveats, and those caveats are what we're gonna cover in this video. Another disclaimer, I am someone that definitely uses my iPad Pro as my primary computer, but by no means my only computer. So as someone that has tried to do everything they possibly can on an iPad Pro, I feel like I have a pretty good perspective of what its shortcomings and its upsides are. So without further ado, let's talk about it. First off, the iPad Pro is a beautiful piece of hardware. It's super thin, it's a touchscreen device, it's got 120 hertz refresh rate, so it's got super smooth scrolling, super smooth writing experience, it has the capabilities of a pen. Specifically, the Apple Pencil is super killer on this tablet. You know all the good side, but you wanna know what are those shortcomings? Well, I've listed them out for you. Really quick, Editor Jarrell here. Just wanted to let you guys know, if you're interested in picking up an iPad Pro or an iPad Air or any of the alternatives that I'm gonna mention in this video, definitely check the description. I'm leaving some links for you. Those are affiliate links, but they cost you nothing extra to use them. So feel free to jump down there if you see something you like. Anyway, back to the video. So the first one is the iOS file system is pretty buggy and it needs a lot of work. If file management is a huge part of what you do, the iPad Pro might not be your only computer. Here's some specifics on things that are problematic. When transferring files from any folder to another or a drive to another, the only progress bar they give you is this very tiny circle. Not a huge deal, except for the fact that that tiny circle won't show up unless you go into the sort menu at the top click a different sort option and then click back and then the progress bar will start to show. Don't know why that bug is still there. It's been there for a long time, just hasn't been fixed. On top of that, that progress circle ends at the halfway mark. So you're watching this progress bar thinking it's going to take forever, but by the time it reaches 50%, it's done. This is something that could be easily fixed with a software fix, but it hasn't come yet. Also, I have not had a very good experience with files transferring in the background. Most of the time, if I start a file transfer in the Files app, I swipe away to something else, the file will stop transferring or it'll run into some hiccup in the transfer process. Also, you can only have a maximum of three windows open at a time when it comes to file management. You can have the split screen, one on one side, one on the other, and then a slide over app, and that's three windows maximum. Maybe not a huge deal, but it's worth mentioning. This is a slightly bigger one. There's no indication on your external drive capacity. So if you plug in external hard drive and SD card, there's no way on your iPad to check how much space is left on that drive. So if I wanna find out how much space I have on my external hard drive, I have to plug it into my Mac to find out, which is kind of a problem when you're trying to use an iPad Pro as your only computer. Just so you know, I will cover all the iPad Pro pluses and benefits after we get through the list of shortcomings, so stay tuned. Number two is issues with external drives. I'd like to add that you may never experience this problem on an iPad, or you might. I've had times where things work and I've had times where it doesn't. Now, I went through a whole headache with this a couple months ago with Apple support and everything. And long story short, here's the problem. iPads apparently have had a hard time writing large files to drives that are formatted in XFAT. Now, just so you know, XFAT is the standard file system for most external drives. That's SD cards, that's hard drives, that's SSDs, all of those XFAT. The issue I was having is I would try to move over my video files because I do edit all of my videos on my iPad Pro, 
but I would move over my files to my XFAT formatted hard drive. And what would happen is there would often be skips and things in the video. So it would have a file rendering issue. I had the same thing when transferring it to an SD card. I tried multiple drives. I tried multiple USB-C hubs. I even tried multiple iPads. So I know it wasn't just an issue with my iPad. So my solution was to format all of my external drives to the Apple file system. That's APFS. Only problem with that is you can only use those drives on Apple devices like an iPad or a Mac. So for people that want to be able to plug these same drives into a PC, that's not going to work, which is unfortunate. Now, recently I went back and tested this and I've noticed that I don't see the problem happening anymore. I'd like to hear some reports from you guys that are iPad owners out there watching this video. If you've had a problem like this, definitely let us know in the comments section. But today I was able to successfully transfer two large video files to an XFAT formatted drive with zero problems. So your mileage may vary, but it was important to add this as a consideration because it's something you might run into. The next issue is with the browser. Now, I think it's awesome that Apple gives us desktop class browsing with Safari on the iPad, but there's some caveats to that. For one, there's no plugin support for the browser. So no Safari plugins in Chrome. There's no Chrome plugins and plugins are pretty important if you're a YouTube content creator because things like vidIQ, TubeBuddy, those can't be used on an iPad. There's also a lack of flash support. When I go to YouTube in the browser and I wanna upload a new video, after I've uploaded, I go and add my end screen as well as my YouTube cards that pop up in the top. And then I also manually place my ads. These are all things that I'm unable to do on an iPad. On the desktop version of Safari, if you go in and you attempt to do these things, it works just fine. The video playback works fine, but when you go to the iPad to do it, and this is on any browser, I've tried every browser, the video playback will not pop up, which makes it impossible to know when to place things. So this one's a bigger deal for YouTube content creators than anybody else, but important to know. The next one is gonna affect a lot more of you, and that's no dual simultaneous audio. What I mean by that is, say I wanna edit some video, but I wanna to listen to some Spotify while I'm editing my video in LumaFusion. If I press play on my Spotify music, it's playing. When I go to press play in LumaFusion, it's going to stop my Spotify audio, so I can't listen to that at the same time. But on top of that, if I stop the video in LumaFusion, the Spotify is not gonna immediately start playing again. I'm gonna to have to go back in and press play. So there's no way to have split stream audio happening and I wish that would be included. The next one is a lack of real monitor support. Now, you can definitely hook up your iPad to a monitor, but you're going to get a boxed in, basically reproduction of your iPad screen. And this really comes down to development. Now, there's some apps like LumaFusion that will allow you to use the full screen in order to view your video playback on the big monitor and handle all your controls on the iPad. And other apps like the Apple Photos app and Google Photos also to take advantage of this but you can't do things like run two apps in split screen and take up the whole monitor that is something i wish would be added that's something that is also very simple to do on a laptop and the last downside that i have is a lack of port options on the ipad pro there's just a single usb-c port there's no headphone jack so if you wanted to use two usb-c ports to replace your headphone jack with an adapter it's not a thing unless you get a usb-c hub or a dongle these are really easy to use and actually really effective, but it's just another piece of gear you have to purchase and it's something else that has to stick out of your iPad while you're using it. I think it would be incredibly helpful if iPad Pros had at least two USB-C ports and that would change the game for peripherals. So with all that said, let me tell you why you might still consider an iPad Pro as your only computer as a music producer. First off, if all you're looking to do is produce music on your, your computer, the iPad Pro can handle it, period. It's all of the other things that someone might need on a main computer that make the iPad Pro a hard sell for me. Now, if you're someone that already has a computer and you wanna have an iPad as your main computer, by all means, it's definitely worth it. That's what my situation is like. But for those of you that only have the option of one, 
these are the considerations. So the best things about having an iPad Pro as your main device is the portability factor. It's incredibly thin, it's incredibly light, and everything is all in one. It's easy to carry around with you, and it's really just a pleasure to use. It's a really intuitive device. Another thing is it's a touch-first interface. All of the apps, everything is designed to be used by touch, and I think that's incredibly helpful as a music producer. Being able to use touch to create music is, in my opinion, the way music is meant to be made. And the iPad makes that easy. It's, it's a layer, it's a very crucial layer that laptops can't offer you unless you're going for like a Windows 2-in-1 type thing. But on the Apple side, iPad is all there is when it comes to touchscreen music production. Another plus of having a touch-first interface is that it takes away the need to have a pad-based MIDI controller. So when I'm making a beat in Beatmaker 3, I can use the touch pads on the screen rather than having to hook up a pad-based controller. Although I am in the future looking to check out the Sensil Morph Sensil if you're watching this. The next one is software affordability. When it comes to music production, your music is only as good as the sounds you choose. And when it comes to music production on the iPad, there's a lot of options in the App Store and they are not nearly as expensive as their desktop equivalents. If you don't believe me, check out this playlist up here, which I will also link down in the description of dope apps that are super dope for music production and are much cheaper than their equivalents on the desktop. When it comes to DAWs, I paid 300 bucks for FL Studio on my laptop years ago and Beatmaker 3, which is what I use now, cost me $26.99. Anyway, software is more affordable on the iPad. Another thing that makes the iPad Pro worth it is its versatility. It can be your touchscreen tablet, it can be your touchscreen note taking, it can be your laptop with something like an Apple Magic keyboard attachment. Of course, you do have to pay for these accessories, but you can use it as your desktop replacement. You can check out this video where I did a tour of my studio where I actually was using my iPad strictly as my only monitor and treating it like a desktop. I've since migrated to a Mac mini slash iPad setup and that video is right here as well, as well as down in the description. But yeah, it can be your laptop, it can be your iPad, it can be your desktop, it can be your note-taking device, your digital drawing device, it can be your photo editor, it can be a lot of different things, and it's very versatile in that way. Now, if none of that was convincing to you and you still think, uh, maybe iPad Pro is not for me, here's some alternatives that might be great for you. My number one pick is the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip in it. Powerful machine made with Apple Silicon. Their chip is inside the new MacBook Air. This chip is very similar to the chip that's found in the iPad Pro. So it's gonna be a beast performer. Now, some drawbacks and some upsides. Obviously, with a MacBook Air, you lose the touch screen capability, which is pretty huge. Uh, in my opinion, but maybe not to you. Upside is it starts at the same 999 that the iPad Pro starts at, the 12.9 inch that is. Now if you go with the 11 inch iPad Pro, you're looking at I think about 799. But another benefit is when it comes to the MacBook Air, you don't have to purchase a keyboard to go with it, where you know you might have to do that if you want the laptop experience with an iPad. And the Apple Magic Keyboard definitely goes for a pretty steep price, 300 bucks for the 11 inch, 350 for the 12.9. So you save yourself a pretty penny there if you go with the Air. <laughs> that rhymed. Another benefit of the MacBook Air is it is compatible with iPad apps thanks to Apple adding that support in Mac OS Big Sur. So that's a killer option. The next option is gonna be the new M1 Mac Mini, starting at 699. So if you're looking for a desktop solution, you don't care about the portability factor, the Mac Mini is gonna do everything that the MacBook Air can do, and it might even do it better. I've heard that it is a killer video editing machine. So if you're looking for a desktop experience, definitely go with that. Another option is to build your own PC or maybe even Hackintosh, didn't hear that from me. These can be very inexpensive and if you go to PC Part Picker, you can kind of Frankenstein a computer together that will be great for you and that I've done that before too. But again, that's a desktop solution. And my fourth option is gonna be something like a Surface Book 
Surface Laptop, or Gaming PC. These are all generally pretty powerful and be great for music production, um, but they tend to cost a bit more, kind of in the MacBook territory. That has been it, you guys. Let me know, are you leaning towards iPad Pro territory? If not, are you leaning towards something like an iPad Air or any of the other options that I mentioned in this video? Let us know down in the comment section. Until next time, creatives, go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video.